All right, this is for Renee <clears throat> regarding cutting circles. As I said before, it's really just practice. Um, one of the things that I always do, especially when it comes to de delicate or difficult carving, is use a glass slicker on your leather. This is a uh, especially chunky, scarry piece of scrap that I have just for practice. <clears throat> and smoothing it makes the blade glide easier through the leather, in my opinion. You don't have to do this stuff, but I found that it helps me with consistency. <clears throat> Next is making some practice circles. I'm going to use a template. Uh, you can use plates, jars, anything circular. But if you have one of these around, it's handy. Um, I'm going to go with a smaller size circle for practice and for scribing this line. I'm just using my modeling spoon. <clears throat> you can make a couple different size ones if it makes you happy since they're already lined up for you. Um, the techniques are the same. I'll do one larger one. So, next is blade choice. There's been talk about straight blades versus angle blades versus the steep angled ceramic blades, etc. Um, really whatever you have is what you need to use and practice with it. Make sure that your blade is properly stropped so that it glides smoothly and we'll start with <clears throat> a half inch straight blade. And I'll use this on the larger circle. So I set the point into the blade and then slowly start carving. And you just follow that tip of that blade is just outside of the line of the circle and by the time the back end of the blade that's in the leather gets to the circle, it's right on. <clears throat> you want to try and always make sure that your blade has... You're, you're always turning your knife so that there's no flat spots. If your blade is sticking in the leather for any reason, or you forget to turn like right there, I just ran into something in the leather that made the blade go a little wide, so it's not going to be perfect. Uh, what I said to you is before on the page is carve towards your body. Um, for circles, <clears throat> it's really important that you have the control that you need, and it allows you to see exactly where that line is. So here's circle number one. It's not perfect. This is with the half inch straight blade. The next one I'll do with the quarter inch angled blade. This is the smaller of the circles that I have. Set your point, same technique. Slowly move the blade towards you. Now I didn't strop this before I started and I can feel the blade sticking in the leather and it's very jerky compared to the freshly stropped blade. <clears throat> I think I'll continue this and you'll be able to see the difference in the circle. As every single time it moves, it's a little jerk action and that can't possibly translate into a smooth cut. Now here I did something that's very common <clears throat> and if you don't turn the leather where you can see the circle as you're cutting it, you have a tendency to undercut <clears throat> because you think you're turning enough but it's a trick and your eye can't follow the line. So you have to make sure that you can see the line that you're trying to cut at all times. You can also see that this circle is very jerky and it's probably because I didn't strap my blade. All right. Now, last one is the uh, Peter Main low angle blade. This is probably the blade I use most these days. <clears throat> and it's the same technique. Start here, set your blade in the point, or the point of the blade rather, into the leather, and then slowly follow the circle around. Now when you get to the point where you can't see exactly where the tip of that blade, or the front edge of that blade is, move the leather. There are those out there that would say, you should be able to do this without ever moving the leather, and perhaps they're right. But until I get to that level of skill, I'm gonna move it. 
you can see that the strap blades move much more freely through the leather. And then the end when you connect your point, it's just a matter of making sure that they're all in there. And there's some quick circle practice. Now, if you're feeling vigorous, you can then take a freehand uh, blade and try and go inside or outside the line. I'm going to go inside. Try and carve inside the line, maintaining the exact same distance all the way around freehand. Now, this is good training because it teaches you to keep your eye um, <clears throat> Uh, teaches your eye to, to maintain the same spacing which becomes helpful in all types of leather work. Um, teaches your hand and your hand-eye coordination and again the same principles apply. Keep that leather turned so you can see exactly where your blade is supposed to go. Always keep turning. There's never a moment in a circle where the blade is not rotating so always make sure that you keep turning it. And come around and set your point to two ends together. And it's not perfect, but it's practice. And that's the whole point. And I'll keep doing this um, on this particular one. Now, the only problem with you keep going and you didn't get it perfect is your eye will tend to follow the non-perfect circle you just carved. And therefore, any circles on the inside will continue to be imperfect. Um, and so that's sort of a self-defeating exercise, but you get the idea. I hope that helps. Um, the only other thing I wanted to add is on really steep angle blades, of which I don't own any except for this, which is a uh, Paul Burnett swivel knife. Um, they tend to want to carve or steer themselves, and this one in particular is really hard for me to steer. I'll do a quick example so you can see what I mean. This is what I was talking about with those Tandy blades. Um, I think that the Tandy steep angled blade that the ceramic ones are, or the standard one that comes with the basic kit, are so steep that they have a tendency to want to steer themselves. And I find them incredibly difficult to control. And I knew this for myself the very first time I ever used it. I said, this cannot be this difficult. And then I started exploring other blades and found all the other ones that I have. So let's just try this. This is the Paul Burnett. It's a pretty steep angle blade and try it. Set the point and start to carve. Well, once it's strapped, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Um, the steep angle allows you to really see where the tip of your blade is, which is nice. Um, and this one doesn't tend to want to steer itself. So either A, I've developed a little bit of skill over the last few years in order to do this, or B, I didn't know what I was talking about in the first place. Um, which is probably true. A new person deciding they don't like something for a particular reason could just be a lack of uh, lack of technique. So there's the last circle right there with that steeper angle blade. Apparently there's no problem. So if that's what you're using, just make sure it's properly strapped and practice. That's all I have.